My name is Julio Massignan. Hello, everyone. And it's very good to be sharing experiences with all of you virtually during this PSCC. I will present our work entitled Sparse and Numerically Stable Implementation of Distribution System State Estimation based on the multifrontal QR factorization. It's an effort in collaboration from researchers of the University of Sao Paulo and also the Brazilian utility COPEL. The widespread use of smart meters is driving many efforts in the context of smart grids. The power grid community is currently exploring many state-of-the-art technologies, such as decentralized computing, embedded intelligence, big data and machine learning, and optimization engines, for a wide range of applications, from pattern recognition, protection and control, load and generation forecasting, and also distributed energy resources and storage management. In this context, state estimation becomes an interesting topic since it can be seen as both a model-based and a data-driven tool for real-time analysis of power systems. However, distribution systems present additional challenges for state estimation, such as the low number of real-time measurements, mainly relying on pseudo-measurements uh, and virtual measurements, as well as the unbalanced, untransposed, with high relation r to x ratio, the presence of short lines that ultimately, and the large scale of the, the networks, that ultimately aggravates the numerical conditioning of the problem. In this sense, extended research has been done specifically for developing distribution system state estimators since the 90s. Uh, since the, the traditional weighted least squares approach presents highly ill conditioning problems, Alternative solutions based on the current based state estimators, such as the branch current and the ad admittance based one, were proposed. That relies mainly on approximations on the measurement model, representing the, the measurements as current, uh, the, the, as currents instead of power flows. Also, the further integration of multiple data sources, such as the phasor measurements units, and also the smart meters. Are, are driving many efforts towards recent recent efforts towards the, the development of distribution system state estimation. In this work, we present a distribution system state estimator based on a multifrontal orthogonal factorization, exploiting sparsity features and its numerical robustness against the severe yield conditioning, the numerical yield conditioning. So, distribution system state estimation. It comprises on a static analysis of the distribution system based on a measurement model to represent the information gathered from meters spread across the network, such as power flows, voltage magnitudes from SCADA systems, active and reactive power from smart meters, or even historical data and typical load profiles from sealed measurements. The estimation consists on a maximum likelihood estimation, generally based on the weighted least square criterion. Since it's a non-linear measurement model, the estimated values are obtained with the iterative Gauss-Newton method by solving the so-called normal equations until convergence is reached. However, this method is very sensitive to numerical stability, since the gain matrix can easily become very ill-conditioned. The main reason is the matrix product and also the distribution system associated parameters with the Jacobian matrix and the diverse weighting of the measurements. In order to surpass the challenges of solving this very ill-conditioned system, we present in this paper a sparse and numerically stable algorithm based on orthogonal, orthogonal methods. First, the method avoids the explicit calculation of the game matrix by performing the following orthogonal factorization, factorization on the weighted Jacobian matrix. By performing some operations, the highlighted linear system is obtained. In the paper, we show that the conditional number of such system is like approximately quadratically reduced when compared to the gain matrix. And also, we present that the final numerical precision is in the order of magnitude of the weighted Jacobian matrix and the computer floating point precision. Uh, another result, 
is also the backward stability of the proposed of the, 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 the factorization method used. The method consists on the multifrontal QR factorization based on the householder reflections method. This method basically consists on a block decomposition of the matrix being, factor, being factorized with householder reflections applied to each, each block. These approaches increases the use of hardware pipeline and also the locality in memory access, enhancing the computational performance. Besides, by treating sparsity along with re reordering algorithms, the method increases computation efficiency while reducing the number of fillings in the factorization process. The, in this work, we use the implementation of the multifrontal QR factorization based on the C library of the Sweet Sparse library. The simulation results. They are performed with the IEEE three-phase unbalanced test feeders that comprises transformers, voltage regulators, shunt capacitors, asymmetrical collections, coupled and coupled three-phase circuits. In order to simulate distribution, the distribution system as a whole, we focus uh, the paper on the IEEE U US low voltage system uh, to perform this, the, the main simulations. Since it comprises the entire distribution system from the high voltage substation, eight primary feeders, and also the low, a meshed low voltage grid. The metering system consists mainly on SCADA measurements, mainly at the substation, located at, at the substation, pseudo measurements at the spot loads uh, at the spot loads of some transformers in green in this figure I don't I don't know if you can see but there are some spot loads in green and smart meters installed at the mesh at low voltage circuits directly measuring the loads. Uh, such measurements are associated with different precision levels that will be a part of the weighting process in the estimator. The analysis consists basically on a Monte Carlo simulation by adding noise to the base case of, ref, uh, of a reference load flow scenario, according to the precision level of each measurement shown before. We evaluate the precision of the estimation using the mean absolute error. And this equation here shows how we introduce noise and also calculate the standard deviation of each measurement. This is important since it's one of the main sources of view conditioning during the state estimation process. First, we show the accuracy analysis in such a Monte Carlo simulation for our proposed method. Just to illustrate the effect of including more precise information from smart meters, we, we simulated different metering system scenarios. The first one using the the current state uh, of distribution systems that are that ha are monitored mainly based on pseudo measurements. The second one, by introducing smart meters at the low voltage uh, loads. And the third scenario with the smart meters at the low voltage uh, uh, loads and also low voltage controllers installed at the distribution transformers. Even with low redundancy, the estimator provides accurate assessment of the network condition in, in, in form of the state, uh, the, the state vector of the, the system. Here we can see the, all the, uh, each, each state variable, each three phase state variable, the voltage magnitudes and the voltage angles. Uh, the system comprises almost 300 uh, nodes. So in three-phase systems, it will be almost 2,000 uh, state variables. And here we can see the, the, the precision measurement measured in terms of the mean absolute error. Uh, another important aspect is also the condition number of the gain matrix and the weighted Jacobian matrix, which is drastically reduced uh, when compared to the gain matrix, quadratically reduced when compared to the gain matrix. It's important to notice that since our method is based on the orthogonal for formulation of the state estimation, we will be dealing with a much less ill-conditioned system.
with the weighted Jacobian instead of the gain matrix. In order to compare the, the proposed approach with the, uh, the traditional gain matrix uh, method, we also perform tests with the IEEE 34 and IEEE 123 test figures. Again, we noticed the reduction in the condition number um, in different levels of redundancy. Um, and also an important aspect that for larger networks like the IEEE 123 and the US low voltage, the approach based on the calculation of the gain matrix diverged only by using only by using the multifrontal orthogonal method that we achieved convergence with the, the specified conditions that we, we simulated. Here, it's the IEEE 123 test feeder, the multifrontal KR method converged in, in four iterations uh, as expected for uh, a Newton-based uh, Newton method, while the U-conditioning of the, the gain matrix caused a uh, divergence of the state estimator for, the, for this test system. Finally, the sparsity patterns are illustrated for the low US low voltage system. Uh, by, by employing a reordering technique based on the approximate minimum degree spanning tree of the Jacobian matrix, we obtained a large reduction of few wings in the process, around 85%. This is important since, since it's uh, another, another enhancement in numerical stability of the, the method. Here we show the, the factorized uh, uh, the factorized orthogonal uh, weighted, weighted, weighted Jacobian matrix factorized without reordering. Here we, with reordering preserving a lot, uh, much more of the sparsity of the, the problem. And here, just to compare the, the gain matrix without reordering. Also, uh, the sparsity treatment also increased the, the computation efficiency of the method, obtaining the result for the IEEE the US low voltage system in about one second. Almost with almost 2,000 state variables. But the conclusions of this work is that for distribution system state estimation, you shouldn't rely on the calculate on the explicit calculation of the gain matrix to perform state est estimation with the weighted least squares method. By exploiting the orthogonal method, we obtain accurate estimates while quadratically reducing the severe real condition associated with distribution systems. Also, sparsity plays a vital role in both increasing computation efficiency as well as reducing few wings. Another numerical improvement. We are currently working on improving even further the computation, the computation efficiency, optimizing the implementation, and exploring parallel computing techniques to deal with larger, large, large and real scale networks. And also seeking to include robust techniques instead of the weighted least squares, and also increasing the unbalanced estimation through observability concepts and bad data processing. Thank you all. Obrigado. And I am open to questions. Oh, obrigado, Julio. It's, uh, the first question is by Ali Abur, who asked you, how do bad data affect this estimator's performance? Oh, Professor Ali Abur, thanks for your question. Uh, it's very it's a very classic result in the in the state estimation ar uh, area that the bit, the weighted least squares is severely uh, affected and negatively affected uh, by bad data the the robust part of this work is uh, strictly related to the numerical robustness of the method related to real conditioning problems of the distribution systems. Uh, I emphasize that we still use, in this work, we, still, we are still using the weighted least squares. So the ro statistical robustness of the method is the, uh, the statistical robustness of the well-known uh, weighted least squares. 
Certainly, the robust techniques such as the, the step absolute value or the Schwepp-Huber state estimator, cohentropy based estimators, would uh, enhance this this performance against that data. But it's uh, an ongoing work. Okay, I have a. I have another question for you. Is you state in the paper that traditional QR is uh, not able to achieve maximum performance because of irregular access of memory? My question is: so is the multifrontal QR factorization approach really more effective than the conventional one? If you do not perform parallel computation, in other words, is what is the advantage using QR or, or using multifrontal QR? Well, the, the QR factorization uh, will hold uh, uh, most of the numerical, will hold the, the numerical robustness properties. If you, you use traditional householder, householder reflections or even Vivian's rotations, you will get uh, good uh, numerical robust results. The advantage of the multifrontal uh, QR is that it exploits the, the sparsity pattern of the, the problem, of the, the matrix being factorized, while uh, trying to use a, a method that reinforces the, the hardware implementation of the factorization. Uh, if we, we use like uh, the, the given rotations that is based on uh, element-wise factorization, we can, we can incur on a less usage of the, the the pipeline of the hardware of the, the computer while uh, the the multi front of qr can increase this 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 usage since it's performing it's, it's basically performing a, a, a full householder re reflection on block matrix on the block matrix the, the smaller one so this this has been pointed not only by in this paper, but also in the literature, as a, a good, perf a good, uh, an advantage of the multifrontal approach uh, dealing with large-scale systems. Okay, thank you. There are some more questions, but uh, okay, Marta, well, we are late, late but there's some more questions by Marta Vanning. Hi, Julio, thanks for your interesting talk. Did you try to compare your approach to other methods that should prevent the conditioning, for instance, the quality constraint estimation? And if so, how do they compare? Try to answer quickly, please. Yes, this is very interesting, Marta. Thank you for this question. Uh, we are currently working with a quality constraint est uh, estimation. Uh, we, in this paper, we didn't compare. We are currently comparing. But uh, as we see in, the, in our initial results, is that uh, the quality constraints you will only uh, be able to, to deal with the ill condition associated with the virtual measurements. Uh, regarding different sources of measurements, such as smart meters, pseudo measurements, SCADA and PMUs, you still have to deal with the associated ill conditions, the conditioning. And, as you as you deal with uh, different levels of the distribution system, such as in the U.S. low voltage system that has high voltage, mean medium voltage, and low voltage systems, the parameters of the distribution network also aggravates the condition. Okay, thank you so much.